Does he stuff work in the nice food? It's it's replica, replica. Yeah. But he looks like it looks yeah. like him. Like he's he's having dinner mind. out tonight oh. at a diner. Like sharing. <laughs> we're, we're linked. Uh oh, I heard a die fall. I got oh, man food's in the building. <laughs> hey. Man food. Hey. hey. Man food's in the building. <laughs> the twentieth is a Tuesday, guys. Um, he comes in. You spot Pendergast with uh, with your down and out friend. Yeah, yeah, I, you don't know. Well, I don't know why you haven't allowed him to see. That's <laughs> a good question. Man, pray. Hey. Man <laughs> they wave at each other. And um, it's one of those friendships. Oh, come join us for having dinner. Well, if you insist. Of course. <laughs> He's got you meals too. So. I mean, I ain't got enough money. But you don't you say know that. No, no, yeah. He's one of those guys that you he always pays for it. He doesn't let you pay for it. Is what it sounds like. He usually does. He usually almost always pays for it. I don't mind that. I know people like that. <laughs> you also heard the story of this town in New Hampshire where this man's wife was murdered or something. This sounds very interesting. Yeah, I've, I've already heard it. No, he tells you it right now. Oh, he tells me. Okay. And that's what you learn about Tyler Bryan. Okay. You know, it sounds like a whole group's going up there. Yeah, I'm looking for work, so... Well, there you are. Yeah. I should join this uh, expedition. <laughs> I can just say I'm an assistant and get paid, right? <laughs> <laughs> All that carry stuff. My well, let's go to Brian's office. Maybe he'll maybe he'll hire you. Yeah, yeah. My guy's yeah, probably actually extra muscle right now. Oh, into the something. diner? Yeah, because he's yeah, okay. not leaving. Well, there's Brian right there. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I guess like put on the Brian. table and I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, professor, <laughs> <laughs> you're at the table Do it. and the door. Do it. <laughs> is this is this on the nicer side of town? This is downtown. This would be downtown. I'll get to you. Don't worry. I'm hoping John would be on the table. I'll just say, because that would be hilarious. Well, I don't know if you think psychology and psychoanalysis. This is, uh, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, uh, Angus Silversmith. He's, he's a prospect, eh? He's got some amazing stories about gold. That's Manfred Donald here. And he wants to break into the, into the moving pictures, is what you've told me. Isn't it? Isn't that what you're doing? Yes. But he's practicing here. Or something. I'm a little confused on that. Yes. Yes, my, my information is a little... Wrong. A. Perfect. <laughs> 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 I told him about Cork the Corkendale's case up in, in New Hampshire. And they're both looking for work. Yeah, right now. Maybe you could hire them on. Are you looking for any hired hands? My guy's like, okay. Well, there's a guy who looks. What, what's your guy look like? My guy is young. He's a big dude, though. Is young, he, big guy. How big is he? What's your size? My size is 13. Yeah. He's and his con is 15. <laughs> Wow, and what? you're in really good shape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, his strength is none though. That's yeah. okay. So is mine. He's a big guy. He looks like he's in great health. My guy's like, okay. They just brought him a meatloaf dinner. He um, looks really yeah. strong. Mashed potatoes mm -hmm. and green beans. He's 16 yeah. strength. Uh, with 15 size. size. I carry everything I own in the back of my bag. Yeah, so he's got a big bag. This uh, guy is his legs. massive. <laughs> <laughs> There's two big guys here. <laughs> and they're like, and I'm like, could use muscle. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you can hire him on it. The quicker you guys actually get associated, the easier it is. The yeah. one like, could use Kinda muscle. Like sexy well, yeah. if I have to, if I hire you on good sir, you're gonna have to take a bath. <laughs> and he's like, if he's got dirty, the bathtub. I know it doesn't smell. Okay. If you've got the bathtub, my man. <laughs> my man. <laughs> Not my man. Mister <laughs> Buddy. Oh, a. There you go. Pal. Yeah, yeah, hey. I'm not your pal, buddy. I'm not your buddy, pal. Eight <laughs> after everything. Eight after everything. Yeah, you got the bath eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. Are you going to hire him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I, I guess. I guess, I suppose. Oh. Because it's kind of, it sounds kind of like now. Mr. Pendergrass is asking a favor too. Yes. It sounds yeah, like it does. it does sound kind of like that. It's like and Pendergrass is a nice fellow, and he's a friend of mine, and he's sent me work. So my guy's like, sure, I'll turn a favor, and get a you know, get a favor, you know. Well, you might want to contact Miss Mary Jane Holland. She's a <laughs> an expert in the occult, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
He's inflating his own so, rumors. <laughs> what I was going to do is probably going to go with you. Shit, the guy ran screaming out of her apartment. Something was going on. So, there. probably it's going to be like Allegedly, Mrs. an hour Park later. It's pretty, You're pretty down clean. to earth, too, though. <laughs> She's not a rumor <laughs> spreader. She lives across the hall from me. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're clean. An hour later, I sit, took him back to get cleaned up. Okay. Well, well, Pendergast, Pendergast also suggested you contact yeah, and so Mary Jane Holland, and he also thought that there was a professor at Brown <laughs> who might be interested <laughs> in traveling with you. Okay, that's one of the brightest minds of England. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he says. That's what Pendergast says. <laughs> he's told me many times. He's one of the brightest minds of England. Said he was knighted for his bright mind. He speaks so slowly, though. <laughs> I think it's because every word is so important. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Pendergast looks up to you, man. You taught him, and he really enjoyed your classes. I know. Because he was like, I understand this so well. He's like my little disciple. He's like, Pendergast is, well, he's really super smart. Pendergast was real smart, and you realize this pretty quick. That he's much smarter than you, even though you're better <gasps> educated than him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, remember, you got up in the world through sheer persistence. Yeah. Staying up, working late every night, studying hard. That's how That's how you got where you are. Pendergast is just like, oh, yeah, that's easy to figure out. Here, what? <laughs> so, so, about, you know. You know more. Pendergast. You're going to hear another knock at the door. Uh, uh, probably okay. not. Probably a ring on the telephone. A ring on the telephone. Uh, they didn't usually list addresses in the old directories back in the 20s. Okay. It would just be the name. And, and actually... She doesn't have a number per se, so you just have to contact the operator and then ask for uh, her name. Um, and then, uh, in this case, it's a pretty rare, it's not a common name, so they've got it. And they'll be like, my mommy, please. <laughs> and you hear a click, 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 click as the phone rings. Yes, hello. <clears throat> and then the operator, you hear the operator click off after that. It's probably a party line, too. Keep that in mind. Most of these lines are going to be party lines. This is part of the job to help me get you involved. That's like, um, Hi, your go. friend, Pendergast. Yes, Mr. Pendergast. Oh, I hope that you are interested in the occult. What? They have three way calls, but. <laughs> well, yeah, but. I do know a bit about it. My field is really in anthropology, but. I could help you if you were going for the occult sort of thing. Well, that's what he told me about her. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's, that's my whole yeah. reason for calling. Oh, yeah, but what, what are we saying in game? Keep going, real quick. Somebody has like. Very well, is it okay if I would come by and speak with you for, you know, you know yada, yada, yada? Yeah. <laughs> when? It's after dinner time right now. At, uh, it's what? It's after dinner time. Well, that's 7 p.m. <laughs> I probably wouldn't go. I don't know. Can I go this way? If your hours are your own, you're probably investigating. <laughs> yeah, so like, if I come back with my in like, my grandpa in the next twenty minutes or so, because he wouldn't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could say so. that. You'll need to yeah. get an address from her. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Did he even say? Did he give you his name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't mm-hmm. hear. Him, so. I said my name. And I was probably you don't good. Say good. Um, to me. Right. Yeah. It's apartment number. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Apartment number five. Five in. The complex of Wayland. Yeah, she gives you basically the, the street address and says it's a small apartment <laughs> building. It's only a three-story building. You're, you're, you're in a nice small little brownstone apartment. So, my other drive over there. Okay. You drive over, you park out front, you go upstairs, you knock on the door. What are you two guys doing? Did you go, are you kind of hanging with him since he's paying you? Or? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, so they're with you. Doing. Are you going to go up to the apartment with them? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you're working with this guy. He's going up with him. You're watching the car. All right, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, you know, you're with him. Sitting in the car, okay. sipping on some moonshine. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. There's one jar, he's got six. <laughs> I don't think he could finish a jar. Yeah, yeah, probably like about to say. Freaking oh, wow. over a hundred proof. Is probably like he's <laughs> sipping he's whiskey. He's had a hard life. I get, good, I get tap, fourth of it. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, At your door. <laughs> you come back, he's wasted. <laughs> oh, yeah. you you're coming in from inside this door. So I open the door. Okay. Uh, you open the door. Uh, uh, both of you guys can make me a spot hidden check. You want to roll percentiles? You too, Aaron, because you're right there. What's percentiles? Uh, percentile dice are going to be. Yeah, one will be. Did somebody made it? Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, God. One is the ones and one is the tens. Here's a 15%. Oh, no. 
He doesn't get it. No. Okay. <laughs> I made a move. The best way for Call of Cthulhu to do it is tell me what you roll. Way too high. Listen up, guys. Tell me what you roll and what you need. So if you he rolled, what did you roll? Thirty-five made it by fifteen percent. No. What do you need? Fifty. Okay. So say he would say thirty-five out of fifty. That's the easiest way for me to go. Okay, that's a success. If I decide to add some kind of a modifier, then okay, then I'll Hate know modifiers. if you made it or not. So what did you roll? Eighty-five. Okay, 85 out of, what is your spot? It doesn't game? matter, okay. yeah, out of 30. 85 out of 30. So that's what you would do, Aaron. Wait, and if you have trouble, remember to do that, and then just let me know, and we'll get it fixed I'm up. Sorry, so you don't notice this, but as you open the door, you hear, you um you look over your shoulder, and the, the door across the hall kind of opens up a crack, and somebody's peeking out, and then closes the door again. Nosy neighbors. Yeah, that's Always what it looks like, nosy neighbors. But you don't notice that. Yeah. You just wait at the door, he opens it, he kind of looks back behind him, and then he goes on into the apartment, and my guy's like, you can follow if you want. Okay. My guy actually tells you to. He's going like, to be like, watch You can make door. a spot hidden, too. Watch the Just to see if you notice that as the door opens. Yeah, watch the hall. It's going to be He's going to you to stand out in the hall and watch. Uh, okay, so you can so, so this guy's very paranoid. That's okay. What's his name? These two. Here's your tens. All right, yeah, yeah. Do I have a little less than your spot hidden? Oh, would you be carrying your gun? Do you have a gun? I do have a gun. I don't know why I would be carrying it, though. Um, if you don't think you'd be carrying it, it's back in your apartment. Simple as that. It's back in my apartment. Yeah. Okay. Why? Did he just ask you if you had a gun? He asked me to stay in the hallway. Oh, okay. Wait right here. And then you went in? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you're standing in the hallway. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, uh, you can make me another... Aaron, you can make me another spot hidden. Okay. So you want to roll yep. those and pick one as the tens and one as the ones unless there are... Yeah, yeah, seven. no, that's already... So. Okay. And that's a... Uh, 22 out of 25. Okay. Yeah, you're standing out there and maybe five minutes later that door opens a crack again and somebody peeks out and then that door directly across the hall from her apartment closes again. Okay. Yeah. So, um... My guy is kind of, you know... Henry guess lives um, next door to you, not across the hall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, this gentleman comes in and you heard the description of him earlier. <laughs> Um, there you go. It's a small apartment. Looks like there's one bedroom. There's a small kitchen area, and you can see a door. And there's a. Oh, looks like a lot like my apartment. Uh, I guess it's it's pretty small, but it's cozy and comfortable. There's one <laughs> shelf with what so, looks like a really no, no. the girly apartment. Plus <laughs> Especially the girly part. There's a shelf with Mind some books. <laughs> looks like textbooks, a few history books probably. Up on top of it is what looks like put it down, remember? She's gonna draw oh, it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> on top of the on top of the very top shelf there's this antique looking glass jar. Um, there's also what did you do with the bullet, Mal? Yeah. <laughs> Mallet Mallor Mallory Mally. Put it in the Wait, let me see if you remember. No, he picked he picked it back up and oh, he played. Yeah. So, um, gentleman just came in. You, uh -huh. I'm assuming you closed the door behind you. Yes. Okay. Go. I'm in. And she said, "Have a seat, didn't you?" Yes. Yeah. 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 So I was like, sit down. And I was like, "Let's unroll." I'm sorry, James. <laughs> I'm trying to get you We will. That's fine. I don't mind. So I have been hired for this. Odd case, because I I've never been hired to investigate a murder a year after it happened. No. <laughs> yes, you must be talking about Mr. Pendergast's friend. Yes. Crockendale. Yes, yes, it's very strange. Well, he said I mean, that. He's <laughs> talked about the strange death. And I would wa I was wondering if someone who knew about the occult. Could it help me in this? Because he was going to pull up probably the article on it. He probably would have looked that up at the library. Um, no, there weren't any articles. There weren't any articles? You haven't had time. Oh, I haven't had time. You really haven't time to do any research yet. Okay. The guy's like, you know, he's talking about this. He was told what happened, I'm assuming. Right. Um, so he's going to tell her about the Henry murder. just told her it was a strange, told you it was a strange murder. But, but the know. guy who I talked to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Whatever I told you is that character. Yes, you have that information. He's like, he would have he's like, he told you about what happened to the murder. And he's like, it's very, and I won't be able to examine the scene because it's a year old. I don't know what they call this or. I don't know. I'll have to. It'll be very interesting. I've never had a never had a case like this. I was wondering if you could help me with your expertise. Yes. Um. I. Could. You could be a forensic anthropologist. Oh, wow. I could be. You are almost an expert. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, since Pendergast is a friend of mine, I can help you out. I'll look into it. Very well, thank you. <laughs> so, my hair just like walks back out. Okay, oh, this so is my associate. Uh, what is your name again, sir? Manfred Donald. Nice to meet you, Manfred. Nice to meet you, Manfred. Yes, yes, yes. And hey, then, this did you tip cool. your hat? Yes. <laughs> My guy puts his hat back on because he would take it off and went inside the park. Oh, Where did this murder happen again? Did I know that? I don't think I did. I don't know if he mentioned that to you or not. No. Uh, you can ask. Pendergast lives next door. So, oh, okay. Yeah. The murder was in that one town, little, uh, in New Hampshire. Yeah, it's, it's in New Hampshire. Caring Cross. Caring Cross. Cross. You had yeah. that information from The murder was in Caring Cross. Cross. I have uh, booked tickets for a train. Ah. I can get you another one if you so did I. Sure. Mm. Well, you assume you'll be recompensed? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, you're right. Okay. Of course, he's a private investigator. He assumes that. When are you <laughs> You just put down as one of the expenses. Yeah. yeah. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. Uh huh. Um, I will meet you tomorrow morning at the station then. I could also have come by and get her yes. nice and far. So. I would well, say that then. Your yeah. character I could her. come and get you, <clears throat> ma'am, if you would so desire in the morning. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. You, you give her time. You, her time. you pick her up by 8 a.m. <laughs> you can get the, it's a 9 o'clock train that's going to yeah. get out of town. That's that's and then you have to go up to, um, Oakdale, Massachusetts on the NYNH and then switch over to the Boston and Maine Railroad, which goes right through Caring Cross. It was it's easy for you to find that out. You go on you haven't got tickets yet, so now's when you go to the train station and quit and buy tickets. I'm gonna help I can get tickets. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we can get you up there. We can get you up there. Okay. I'm gonna try to get Kyle involved now so he can go travel with them as well. Oh yeah. Oh. I'm gonna I was also gonna go talk to Kyle. Oh okay, good. Um yeah, okay. Yeah, because he did name drop him. He did finds he? Me. That's right, I did name drop him. Doctor, uh, yeah, okay. No, he finds me waiting outside of his uh, <laughs> building. <laughs> oh, did I name drop him to you, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. So, awesome. Uh, I, like, I can't well, remember all the information I'm giving out. I come so back. Much. I come back. Okay, so you go back. You've been knocking on the door. It's probably be, uh, about 8.30 because you stopped at the train station, <laughs> yeah. picked up the tickets for four of you. And See you there's man. a very dapper, well-dressed gentleman with a large mustache and a monocle in one eye standing outside of your um, your office. I was like, okay, um, well, are you reading a book? Do you have any way to pass the time? Or are you just people watching? Or what are you doing? I'm just checking my golden pocket watch. Okay. He, he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he keeps pulling, pulling his pocket watch. As you approach, he's pulling his pocket watch out and keeps checking it. Like he likes <laughs> that action. Like, hmm. Uh -huh. It's two minutes. It's ten seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> like, basically, like, he has 80. My guy does have a pocket watch, okay. but... You probably have a wristwatch. Most wristwatches were available in 1920s. Oh, they were? Okay. Pocket watches are just neater. Okay, so yeah, he's obviously he's waiting right outside of either he's waiting outside your office door, or like there is a doorway that leads up to your apartment and one other small apartment above. He might be waiting for somebody there, but it's right outside the office door. So I walk up. Yeah. So <laughs> Tyler Brian, I assume. <laughs> All right. Yes. Are you guys still with? Are we in the Brian? car, Aaron? You want yes. to sit in this moonshine? Mm -hmm. Me. Yes. Wait, how many seats <laughs> does your car have? Four? I think, okay. uh, no. I think you have six in that vehicle. Ooh. Six? I think you can see six. six. What, was, what kind of car was it? Uh, Cadillac 314. Equipment and resources. Uh oh. Beep boop. Beep boop. Nothing. It's from the future. That's fine. <laughs> five. You can Whoa. sit five comfortably in that car. Three in the back, two in the front. Okay. okay. So, so yeah, they were perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah, they're probably, one of them was probably in the back and one of them was in the front. I made it. So he pulled up, parked on the street. That's a nice car, but it's not as nice as yeah. it's a, Is it hard top or yeah. soft top? <laughs> soft top. Okay, okay, soft top. So he pulled up, came out, you said that, you approached him. These two men are still sitting in the car, giggling, apparently, to each other. We were drinking moonlight. <laughs> moonlight. <laughs> moonlight. <laughs> funny business this, funny business this. Minding my own day I was today. <laughs> Beautiful day as it was. And Sir William Pendergast came to me. <laughs> Telling me of a murder that had not been solved in quite some time. I went along my business, but it troubled me. This murder that our law enforcement could not solve. So I thought to myself, a 
bright mind of England could solve this crime. <laughs> Look, I sit there going, wow, that's weird. I call Mr. Pendergast, and he tells me that he has hired you. <laughs> Now, are you shouting while you're doing this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I'm checking my pocket watch at the same time. Funny, funny business, this. So, I have already bought my train ticket, and I will accompany you. Good day, sir. This <laughs> <laughs> guy's like, he yes. just walks away. He's <laughs> like, what the? You have no idea who that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. That's how I'd handle it. That's, That's how I'd handle it. I like that. Maria's like, like, Maria's like, well, no, it's if he wasn't like, such a, like, if he wasn't such a, like, the guy he was, he'd be like, who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, fuck and shit are not in the vernacular yet. Yeah, I know. They just aren't used. Nobody uses them yet. So keep that in mind when role-playing. What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? Good lord, great god. What the hell? Oh. flam? What the flim flam? <laughs> you know, like, some weird, goofy thing that you say you can. He's like, shut the fuck up. like, what the no, not that one. That was too bad. I guess like you pass this this car where there's these two hey, it's, it's rugged four. looking gentlemen is the best way to put it, sipping out of what appears to be a nice <laughs> joke. And I say as I pass, yeah, this is why I am a company. <laughs> <laughs> you guys drinking moon juice? <laughs> Something. What, what were you asking? Would I have noticed him drinking moonshine in the back? I know, do a spot, spot check. check. Yeah, do a spot hit. We're having, um, I don't think it's really going to be hard. It, it just make not. it all. The people you I just hired. 38 out of 50? Um, you turn around as he's walking away to watch him go, and yeah, you see, he hands him, maybe it's just water, he hands him uh, um, mason um, the mason jar, and he takes a sip, and he's like, <laughs> how do you react when you take a sip of really... Whoa! And that's, that's exactly what he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pack. And then, it's like, and then you, he, you see him seal it back up for now. No, it's probably like take each of you take his drink and then you seal it and then you enjoy talking for a couple seconds and then you. Open up. <laughs> That's kind of how you're probably gonna have the, between the two of you and what you drank earlier. Probably that one mason jar is about gonna end up being about half empty. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought so too. You thought you noticed this weird smell in your car when you got back down, but you didn't think much of it because it's a soft top car, so it's open this time of year. Yeah. And there was hardly any smell at all. Yeah. And um. Does your car have an electric starter? Yes. Okay. Yours probably definitely does. Yours probably definitely does because of the money. <laughs> yeah, was, Yours does. We figured that he's out. He's got the same car as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right behind him in line. Uh, you guys are no fun. <laughs> Ours has <laughs> cruise control. Crank. <laughs> 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 oh, Alright, so what do you do? Anything else that you three want to do that evening? No smoke been checking. <laughs> it's like you have your apartment you can go back to. You don't I have don't, a place to stay. I don't stay. have a place. Hey, um, do you care if I crash back to your car tonight? <laughs> Not crash, <laughs> but miss, can I you care if I sleep? Is there if I sleep in the back of your car tonight? Hey. hey. <laughs> There's room on your floor in your apartment too. Yeah. If you want. So just FYI. Oh, my guy's like, oh, this guy's like. He just does this. You hired the wrong person. You go to the, the. What you got is two doors. This one leads to your little office. This one leads to steps up where there's a couple apartments up there, and one of those, the one directly over the office is yours. It's real small. Uh, it probably doesn't have an extra bedroom. It's just got a Murphy bed that pulls down and a bathroom, <coughs> and then a little area that's like a kitchenette. Mm -hmm. Very inexpensive way to live. Um, and then it looks out onto to the street down below. Um, there's plenty of room on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, you could pull the Murphy bed down and sleep on that, and uh, and you've got some furniture in there too. You could have a couch yeah. or a love seat, maybe would actually be better. Yeah. And you could let him bunk there, throw him a couple blankets, let him yeah. sleep there. So that's what my guy does. Okay. okay, thanks, man. So you got a place to sleep tonight. You're going. You can go back to your apartment. He's told you when the train is the next morning. Yeah, to ask you him. know, uh, you've got a ticket with him. Mm -hmm. All right. Since John isn't here yet, I was gonna, I was waiting for John to get yeah, you involved. There he is. Uh, Pendergast shows up at one of the speakeasies that you're that the mafia that you run. Has and you decided to go there that night and have a couple of drinks. You know Pendergast. You've met him. He's a nice kid. Um, How old is he? he? He's only twenty-five. He's twenty-five. Um, yeah, he's a kid compared to me. Yeah. He's, <laughs> very respectful. he's respectful of his elders, which is something that you appreciate a lot. Of course, these kids today, twenty-three skidoo and all that. Kind of <laughs> um, but he's very respectful, and and if, when you found out that his family was pretty rich, that piqued your interest too. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, money, money, money. <laughs> money draws money. You're well off. They're well off. And um, you run into him that night, and he also brings up this 
thing uh, that's happening up in New Hampshire with this McCorkadale fellow, and that he um, um, that he's been he's been hoping someone would go help this gentleman out, and he just brings it up in passing in casual conversation, um, like he was hiring him. Does it sound really occulty? Yeah, actually, it, okay. well, he doesn't know, but he does know that his neighbor next door. Um, something that she's into the occult and she's very interested in the case. Okay. He's been drinking quite a bit. He's obviously pretty tipsy. The the story's exploding out of control. Especially when he's <laughs> she's a master of the occult. <laughs> he doesn't know that part, but he does know that something that she did caused a man to run screaming from her apartment. So yeah, that would pique my guy's yeah. interest. He's like... <laughs> At least according to Mrs. Burke. She lives across the street. No, wait, that's good. No, there, there's the accent. There it is. At least according to Mrs. Burke, she lives across the hall. She's so nosy. She's always like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I like drunk Pendergast. Pendergast. And he's, he's, he's not real drunk, but he's nicely tipsy. He's tipsy. Yeah, yeah. And he's not gonna, you know he's not driving. He doesn't drive. He doesn't have a car. He takes taxis everywhere. So um, he mentions this to you. And yes, he's it does sound so. a call tish. <laughs> so and he gives you drops like every name that he's dropped that he knows all these people so he's giving you every name because he doesn't know the meaning of the word secret apparently yeah. uh, it's nobody like, sounds interesting to him except for her and okay. that she's interested in the case because right. that's all he cares about and that's what Pentagraph has kind of put it up to you that, that she's very interested in this that she's in the cult she's very interested and of course oh. you know that detective and I understand that he's killed a hundred men or something in the war I don't know that actually might so, be yeah, yeah, that would, that would put an eye on that guy. <laughs> that guy might be dangerous. <laughs> he has a beautiful picture of this gun toting man in the window. I think he's supposed to be a self portrait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like this with a cigarette. <laughs> That's not what it actually looks like. That's how Pentagas describes it. It just says, hey. <laughs> Yeah. It's actually, yeah, just that. Um, hey. Hey. <laughs> he mentions all these people, and he says, Where's McKeith? Is he in here tonight? I haven't seen McKeith in days. Well, is that the bad, thief? Though. Huh? Is that the thief? McKeith is um, John's character. Yeah. He's a thief, right? Oh, and he's yeah. just an antiquarian who... who Does thieving on the side. <laughs> you guys don't know anything. Oh, actually, shoot, you might. Um, <laughs> yeah, you might be... <laughs> he he might be encroaching on our territory me, if he's not part of it. <laughs> give me a no check. It's up in the upper right. There's, it's actually set up in parentheses. I mean, in percentiles next to your, like, stats. Oh, the knowledge? Yes. Oh, Give me a roll on that. I should know that. Okay. 75. <laughs> Make a roll. Let's see if you get it. Uh, 31. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's asking about McKeith. And you know McKeith is um, a... One of he, our foot... You know that he works with, with your the fences that are associated with this, with your with your organization and this speakeasy. And that he brings in a lot of great stuff. Very expensive, very small items is what he prefers to, to deal with. You guys don't know any of this. Keep that in mind. Oh, actually, I might I have some idea about that. No. You have no idea. McKeith keeps it real close to the chest. He's very super secretive. Um, so you kind of know, you know McKeith. You've talked to McKeith once or twice. Yeah. Um, rude. Is that, am I wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> but nice. But a nice, but a friendly a friendly fellow. And um, I can't remember the name of the other NPC. Wait, does he understand the, the hierarchy? Speakers. Yes. Okay. Very much so. Okay. Is it, yeah, it's Tony. C Capelli or something like yeah, that, something. who runs a speakeasy, and then his brother actually is the fence that McKeith works through most of the time. Nice. Um, very polite, very respectful. A bit, he can be blunt, not rude, really blunt. He can be very okay. Like, yeah. Um, that yeah, there's a big difference. And you you kind of put feelers out about the occult, right? Yes. From what you understand, McKeith is completely non-superstitious and totally down to earth, and doesn't believe in any of that bunk. Yeah. You've kind of heard this. Oh, uh, also, we could throw it in that uh, some of my, like, because I, I, I didn't want to be the top of the food chain. You're not. Uh, yeah, at all. Especially like, I at wanted, your age. I wanted You're people to think that I'm... phased out. Yeah, right exactly. Now. I wanted people to think that I'm starting to go or something. That <laughs> basically, I'm losing power because of this. Okay. McKeith doesn't have... McKeith is just uses the fence and the speakeasy. He does yeah. not know who's in charge um, or who's important. Um, as far as the mafia goes, he's not associated with the family. He's not associated with the mafia. He's doing his own thing, and he's he's using you guys as far as like to fence goods, yeah, and to enjoy his evenings when he wants to come in and get have a few beers or a few mm -hmm. hard liquor or whatever. But he's not a part of the mafia. He's an independent. But he know, he's but he's respectful, so he probably doesn't have any clue who you. Oh yeah. 
Except that you're an old guy that occasionally is here in the speakeasy. He's never seen you at at um, at the fences. Um, he might not even know you're part of the. He might just think you're a gentleman who comes in and has a few drinks at speakeasy. So. Yeah. Sounds about right. There you go. Um. So, okay. yeah. so, kind of so yeah, my go. You guys are heading up there. You should go if you're interested in the occult. <laughs> Do you know about the occult? I've actually been researching <gasps> it as a play. Let's go talk to Mary Jane. Come on, we'll go right now. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> it's probably about nine o'clock at night. Okay. Pendergast came in here it's after dinner at some bad. point. He came in here after dinner and he's been enjoying himself immensely. And you know he's. Uh, he's calling me right now. Oh, take it. Definitely take it. You know that. Um, oh, he's harmless. Um, Pendergast probably might not even know the, the connections that this place has. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he's like, oh, let's go, come on, let's talk to her, she's so sweet. Oh, that one's awesome. Hey, don't right. mention her scar. She has a scar. It's hideous. <laughs> she was so pretty before that, but they did something during the Amazon, something like that. I don't know, I don't know. I have a question about this. <laughs> yeah. I need to have her roll up her, charisma, her appearance before the scar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you know, be careful with those, because if you break them open, they're sometimes they're fiddly about going back. It looked like you, gotcha. you got the good one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I see how it works. Well, the you know in the nineteen twenties they had plastic surgery, so they probably they might. They did like, after the war. That's what makes that doesn't mean she got it. Really? Yeah, but she could. Still, might be able to get it fixed. She might be. Able to, I like but it. But there's no, also this to worry about. Yeah, there is an expense. Did you guys have it on there? <laughs> <laughs> you like it because it makes noise, don't yeah. you? I don't trust this one. 